Hello guys, this is my paint station now. If I can just get that right, sorry. Just zoom that right. So, here I've got my last infantry platoon ready to paint. Oh Christ, I can't see properly. There we go. So, this, I'm sorry, the zoom's all messed up. Don't worry, that, that shouldn't be a problem. So this is how I have my guys to paint. And I have them on the end of this, because I'm not using this one. And I have a little bit of blue tack underneath. Stick them on top. And the great thing about that is you don't have to worry about under the base, because nobody's ever going to look under your bases. Uh, if they are, you want to kind of keep them at arm's length. They're probably a little bit weird. And, um, sorry. So, yeah. Basically, I like having them, having them at this height, because it means I'm not doubled up over my desk. And, um, sorry again. It means that I can, um, you know, just pop it down, hold it with one hand and just paint every part of the model without having to actually hold the model and get my fingers covered in paint and actually get uh, mess up the paint job. So, you all know this, but in case there are any guys new to uh, wargaming as a, as a hobby, bit of a newspaper, you don't want to mess up your desk. You want a pallet, so it uh, doesn't have to be a proper pallet. This is a lid from a Chinese takeaway, washed it up. It's nice, it's plastic, the paint doesn't absorb into it. it takes a while for it, the paint to dry out. And uh, you can see I've even mixed uh, some colours, trying to get a good yellow for things like um, Panzer Shreks. Uh, hasn't quite worked, but uh, we're getting there. So you want to have your palette there. Brushes, you want a good selection of brushes. Now here, I have, if I can just, there, two Games Workshop fine detail brushes. I've got these because um, they are good fine detail brushes and I know they work and I just picked them up when I was in one day. This is, I'm not sure what this is, you can get these in places like, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I've really buggered up the zoom here. You can get them in places like uh, Dunnell Mill or just uh, Arts and Crafts Store if you're uh, not in the UK. This, I wouldn't ever use this for uh, infantry really. But it's uh, really good for painting up things like um, tanks, uh, large large bits and bobs, even bases maybe. Uh, you probably should never do that with your brushes by the way, never mess about with that. Because um, some brushes are quite delicate. These are the army painter brushes that came in the uh, starter set I got. And there's a dry brush and there's a little brush there. Now this brush I use just to stab in ink into the model. So once everything's dried and painted I like to... Uh, Wash it with ink, and I use that just to poke it in the little wells. So um, you want, you know, you can get away with one brush, you can get away with two. Luckily, over time, I've uh, built up a few brushes. This is uh, just a bit of a lone brush there. It's pink. It's my sister's. Um, thank for, she doesn't wall game. This is hers from uh, anime painting and stuff. But um, that's quite useful for doing again big big washes on uh, bigger vehicles. Your paints. Now, this is the paints I think I'm going to use for these models. So I've got three Games Workshop Foundation paints, I've got a brown, I've got a Codex Grey or Astronomical, Astronomical Grey, whatever it is, and a dark green. I've got German Camouflage Green, which I think is a model colour. Model colour, couple, so I've got a red, three greens, a metal, three browns, a yellow, and a grey. Uh, I think that's quite a good combination, sorry that's not yellow, sorry that's uh, flesh. Um, that's really all I feel I need to do these particular models. Obviously in time my, uh, my skills will get much better and I'll, um, I'll use a lot more paints I imagine. The rest of my paints are just hiding away in here. So as you can see they're a mix of uh, army painter and model colour. The model colour ones are from um, a Napoleonic casting set I got a while ago which is um, uh, it's got a load of moulds for some kind of old toy soldier style uh, uh, old guards because uh, I, do, I do love Napoleonics. And uh, that's, that's uh, one of my favourite areas of history to study. Uh, if you want to have a look at that kit, I can uh, throw up a video for you. Uh, I got it, oh, it's cool, seven or eight years ago now. Absolutely fantastic bit of kit for uh, guys who are just getting into moulding their own stuff. Um, again, I'm moving, I want to get rid of it. So if anyone's interested in it after seeing a video, I'll throw it up. This isn't a for sale site. Don't worry, it's not going to be constantly me selling stuff. I've just got a couple of bits and bobs that I need to get shot of at the minute because I'm moving house. Um, so yeah, those are all my colours. I might, you know, sometimes I'll use the blue, uh, sometimes I'll use some other colours, but really for these guys, you don't, I don't feel I need a huge amount. 
and this is for the final stage because I don't um, seal my models because often I find the way a seal model looks is very shiny and I really don't like that. I like the, the way my models look unsealed. I know that often means they all require me painting. Could I keep knocking stuff over? But yeah, this is just some cheek, cheek, <laughs> cheap blue ink. As you can see, it's nice and full up. So somewhere to lay your brush down. And at the end, when everything's dried out and everything's done, bases and all. Oh no, I'll do it before I finish the base. When everything's done, just water that down. Maybe um, one part ink, five parts water or more. Because you don't want the ink to be too strong. And I just chuck it over every, all of the model, for the infantry at any rate. Just over everything. No need to be fussy. And um, it, it provides a nice deep textured layer. Well, not as, not as much textured, but gives the models a nice deep look. Especially if you're painting a dark colour scheme, I find. Um, a, a dark blue, or a dark red, or a dark green ink wash can just uh, really make them look that a little bit better, I find. But uh, obviously, it's each to his own. So this is the paint station with the knocked over, which isn't great. There we go. And um, oh yeah, here we've got the basing materials, which is the last thing I do. So just some regular. Oops. Start. I'm not going to open up because it'll go everywhere. Some regular static grass and some clump foliage. I've only got the two, the one colour of each at the minute because I found they were a bit expensive where I went to buy them but obviously over time I will be ordering more and my stuff will start to have a bit more variety and hopefully look a bit nicer so stay tuned for the painting video which will be part part two probably okay so thank you very much have a nice night